hear me now? You guys good? What's up, Trish? Can you guys hear me okay? Anthony, you all right? Let me know, let me know. Check mic, check mic. Okay, hold on one second, okay? Just want to make sure that you guys can hear me okay. There it is. All right, so let me know if you can hear me. All right, perfect. So I see um, signs that you guys can hear me. So I appreciate you guys for being on time. And I know it's pretty early, especially for those of you who are on the West Coast. Yes, 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 yes. All right. So, um, you know, without further ado, let me just uh, share with you what we're actually going to cover in this morning's webinar and this training. And, and man, I'm excited that it's gotten this far, you know. For some of you that are going to join us on this, um, on this webinar, some of you have actually been um, following the brand at Sales You Master for, for quite some time. And I appreciate your support. I see you, you know, I'm studying the, the craft that I'm learning. And the craft that I'm learning is actually communicating a message that I, I know very well, which happens to be um, selling. It's, it's the science of selling. And in this webinar, what I'm going to share with you is some practical tools that you're going to be able to apply today inside of your craft. We're going to cover um, some real helpful information on inbound and outbound origination. This is the actual hunt. This is the marketing of our, of our process. We're also going to cover the transition into actual selling because marketing and selling are two different things. And then we're also going to cover some transition from actual selling to closing. And then I'm going to cover some information to enable you um, to take more control of, of what we find to be such a challenge each and every single day, and that's originating sales. And so, first off, let me let me start off by the warm up. You know, um, if if for whatever reason the the signal you guys have there's a delay, don't worry about it. You should probably maybe turn off all the background applications if you're on your mobile phone. Maybe close all the background apps, especially things like Facebook or YouTube. Not YouTube. Well, yeah, YouTube because you're on you're on a different platform here and it's going to save your data. Um, but if you're on a desktop, you know, you definitely want to close down any other browser windows to ensure that it's not delaying your experience in this webinar. And I ask that you grab a pen and paper also. There's going to be some information here that you're definitely going to want to jot down because this information is not, it, this is a private webinar. So only you who, who logged in and actually see this are going to be able, going to, be able to catch the content. And so the meeting is going to be about an hour long. Um, so, you know, it's going to be end about nine o'clock this morning. And for uh, for those of you who who do not know who I am, my name is Daniel Neekart. I I'm from California, Orange County, the mecca of mortgage companies. And I work and represent uh, the second largest privately held mortgage banking company in the country called New American Funding. And currently right now, I am a producing sales manager. I lead a team of 12 agents who represent the top 10% of the company. My team is, sits as number one. My team has, has the highest per LO unit average as well as per volume average for the months all throughout 2017. As a matter of fact, um, you know, I'm not trying to blow my horn or anything. I just want you to know that there's good reason why you woke up this morning um, to catch this, this webinar. And, and I, I think it's important that you know who you're catching the information from because there are a lot of influencers who speak our language, but all they want to do is sell you a gizmo or an app or a software or some sort of technology that you need to learn how to write code in order to use. And that's just not going to happen here. What separates me from those individuals or those influencers is that what I give you is information you can use in everyday communication. In this particular webinar though, I'm going to cover with you how you can utilize it in originating sales. So it's going to be um, very helpful. And um, you know, with, with regards to, to having a mentor, you know, it, it's, it's important that you have some sort of mentor, some sort of coach. But it's even stronger if that mentor or coach is a current practitioner in what you do. And so like I originate sales today. Um, you know, I'm in, the, I'm in the trenches with my guys today. And I, I, I've noticed that 
one of the main reasons why we currently sit as a number one team is because I'm in the trenches with them. I'm, 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 I'm at an equal level from them. And so the language that I speak is gonna sound very familiar uh, with you today. And I have a gift for you um, at the end of the presentation or at the end of this webinar, I'm going to give you access to something that is not available or was not available before. And you're going to be one of the very first to view it and it's absolutely free. And I'm going to show you how to also gain access to the tools that you need in order to take back control of your sales origination process. So again, what will not happen today is I'm not going to sell you no application. I'm not going to sell you no monthly subscription or anything like that. I'm not going to sell you, you know, some software uh, that most sales trainers do. But what I will be covering though, and we'll hop right into it, is, is prospecting. And, you know, in the current climate or the current market today, what, what we, where we stand as of right now, you know, with the market pivoting and the market changing, is that we're noticing that the refinance business is, is, is declining, right? Not only that, but the refinance inquiries are declining. And when I say declining, I'm talking about compared to how we were or, or how the market was about a year ago or this time last year. And what we see climbing though, is still a real estate business. It's still business with regards to purchase, but it's just the, you know, the amount of refinances went down, the amount of purchases went up, and so where, where I'm going to help you is learn how to originate both. So both refinance and also purchase. And I, first off, before I even go into prospecting, I want us to understand marketing in a different way. I want us to look at marketing as our bridge to make a connection. Because when, when, when we think of marketing, we can think of it in one or two ways. We can think of marketing as, as smoking mirrors, right? Like marketing, because marketing gives you know, whether it's an advertisement by mail, advertisement by radio or commercial or even word of mouth, sometimes there's, there's only the highlights, right? And so, so not too many people actually read the disclaimer. And this can put us in sales in a bind because, you know, the marketing ad could have been something that costs two points. And when we first engage with that prospect and we make that connection, it can be very difficult to, um, to pick up right to to kind of be enthusiastic for someone who calls in for that advertisement and so what i have found uh, being in the industry for over 15 years now i've been able to develop and remaster a typical traditional script i've reworded the wordplay in a way that the script converts very high um, you know and i think that's one of the challenges that we face as of today is bringing a prospect from hello to congratulations, you're funded, right? Where in this market, as of today, it's, it's even hard to get, to get the prospect from hello to, okay, I'm gonna go and pull your credit. Because sometimes they won't even let you get that far, right? And, and that point where you ask for the social security number sometimes can be about 30 to 45 minutes. So where does that leave us though, right? As salesmen, as mortgage bankers, we're in a position where you know, we have to continue that momentum. We have to continue the origination system or we're simply going to go through roller coaster situations where our income is high and then our income is low. Our income is high and our income is low. And what happens as mortgage bankers is our emotions, they go high and then they go low and then they go high and then they go low. And so, you know, you, you catch yourself inside this mental game, this mental warfare where, where what if it could just be easier? What if we could, um, you know, connect with our prospects in a way where we can eliminate the resistance and quickly find out if whether or not we can even go forward with that conversation. Does that make sense? And so I wanna, I wanna share with you something, you know, in, in that uh, the script, by the way, I'm gonna hook you guys up at the end of this. It's a completely revised, remastered, redesigned uh, script. You know, so if you said, hey, Daniel, I've already downloaded your script, I have it. No, you don't got this one. <laughs> this one's much more, um, more defined. It's even prettier. It's got nice graphics. But where I think it's really going to help you is understanding the market today, understanding the prospects that we receive today, understanding our competitive edge, whatever company you work for, you know, we have to embrace that. We have to we have to realize that there are more individuals or more companies than ours that are going after that prospect. There are even companies that 
that once we pull credit on that particular prospect, all these other companies are just calling right away. And if we're not empathetic to that, or we're not aware of that, then we may not be doing the simple thing as to set the right expectations so they don't leave you. So for example, you know, after you pull someone's credit, and if I knew that more than likely their servicer or a company who purchase, purchases what's called trigger data or credit inquiry data, more than likely are going to go after that same prospect, right? And so the game is, well, how can I create loyalty? How can I create anticipation to work with me? And what I found is that you just, you, you learn how to make noise in a different way. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. And so first off, I wanna um, cover one of the most common lead types that we actually engage with on a day-to-day -day basis, and that's, um, that's inbounds. And so inbound leads uh, can, can be transferred to you from a customer service representative. An inbound lead could have, could have contacted you from a mail piece or what have you, but they're inquiring to learn more. And I want you to, to really think about that. When someone inquires about something, it's because they have curiosity of information, right? About the information that you presented to them or you gave them a sneak preview. And this curiosity, it, it creates curiosity, right? Like, so, so basically they just want to know if it can help them. And from a consumer standpoint, right? When we influence and we try to create um, uh, like an attraction, we have to understand why they're curious to begin with. And that's really just the key. And so what this script does is that regardless of how you get the transfer, whether it was through a CSR, which is a customer service representative, or whether it was from a inbound lead or inbound call, inbound inquiry, even a walk into your company, the new model, the new way to sell, the new way to influence is to give the impression that you are there, of course, to help them save time. Because when you think about any, any time that you've ever inquired about something, you just want to quickly find out if it applies to you. Where I believe a lot of the connections we get today are from customer service representatives or another department that transfers it to us, whether it's in our own building or overseas, we rely on a connection, like a bridge. So sometimes it's a customer service representative in the Philippines. <laughs> sometimes it's a, it might be my cousin. <laughs> sometimes it's a customer representative who, you know, who's in your corporate office or in your customer service department and they transfer it to you. If they don't already tell you, you should be asking that representative if it was an outbound or inbound call because there's a difference, right? If a customer service representative catches someone who is on an outbound call, that customer service representative is, is also like us. They just want their numbers up, right? They have to hit their numbers. They have to, they have to deliver value in order to keep their seat. And so do we. And, and, and customer service representatives are, are basically junior mortgage bankers. They're trying to get to our level. Where I think a lot of the resistance comes in though is that sometimes when us as mortgage bankers, when we get into the groove, when we get into the zone, we sometimes forget or maybe slack on the absolute most important time and the most important piece of our job, which is originating new sales. And so every single sale starts with, hi, my name is Daniel, right? This, this is your introduction. And today, with today's market, today's rates, today's competition, today's climate, it, it's now a challenge just to get them from, hello, my name is Daniel, you know, how can I help you, to, to move on further with the conversation. And I want to explain why. So when we, well, number one, when we first engage with that prospect, if you're currently asking them within your first sentence of your introduction, how can I help you? you're giving them control of the conversation. So if they say, oh, well, I heard this radio ad for a 2.5 or a 3.5, and that consumer believes it's a 30-year fix, because again, they don't read the disclaimer. They don't know, you know, like you and I do, that that's only available on a 10-year fix, right? But that's the reason why they call in. And I hear it too often, and if, if this sounds familiar to you, now you are prepared with how to get past this roadblock but it ultimately is a roadblock and unknowingly we can be positioning ourselves for the resistance that stops us from creating the sale. 
So for example, if your traditional intro is, hi, my name is Daniel, thanks for holding, how can I help you today? Or it's a great day at my company, how can I help you today? You're actually letting your prospect drive where the script that I'm going to give you access to at the end of this, uh, this webinar, it's gonna show you how to take control. It's gonna show you how to actually funnel the conversation quickly to identify, number one, if you should even spend more time <laughs> with, with that prospect. Because the truth of the matter is there are a lot of prospects who could not refinance over the last year or two years or simply could not do it because of you know numerous reasons, credit seasoning, bankruptcy seasoning, foreclosure seasoning, um, debt to income ratio, right? There's just so many reasons and we're seeing more of it now in today's climate because we're originating anything and everything that we can. And this is why we sometimes get de demotivated or deflated because we believe, oh, it's the quality of the leads. It's the quality of these, of these darn inbound leads. Everyone already refinanced in 2016 or 17 when the market was in the threes. How can I put them in the fours? And I want you to understand something is that when someone inquires, right? When someone is, is interested or at least interested enough to connect with someone where they perceive they're gonna get information, really what they're worried about is, is the results of, of that lower rate. And so for example, our consumers, right? Whether, or our prospects, whether it's an inbound or outbound or it's a purchase lead or, or whatever, at the end of the day, how they perceive, because they don't understand the language like you and I, they don't know the dynamics of the mortgage like you and I. And so when they, when they hear um, you know, lower rate and they, they look at their, their loan program, right? And they, the, the only way that they believe they can lower their payment is to lower their rate. So they need to lower the rate in order to lower the payment. They have no understanding as to, well, if I go into this program, I can actually lower payment. If I defer my mortgage, I can get this much money. They don't know all of that. And so we find ourselves in a position where we can do one or two things. We can be a salesman, right, right off the gate. And you know you're a salesman if you're sitting there trying to pitch features and pitch products as if that person even wants those, right? And so, and so for an example, someone called in and said, hey, my name's Daniel, you know, and you don't wanna, please, I hope you're not doing that anymore. You know, that, that tonality, like, hey, it's Daniel and it's a great day at my company. I appreciate you for holding. How can I help you? You know, it's, it's just that it's not genuine. And I think that there are certain sounds that consumers are wired to avoid, and that's one of them. But let's say that you do ask them for, you know, how you can help them. And they say, you know what, I, I want to go ahead and get that interest rate of three and a half. We have a choice to be a salesman or we have a choice to be a consultant. And I believe that selling today is now a, being a consultant. And, and I'll explain why this is effective. But when we are a salesman, when we hear that and say, oh, I'm just calling in for that three and a half, we immediately, we immediately, co uh, we immediately reference our rate sheet and say, oh man, that, you know, it's four and a half, four and three quarters, sometimes 5% on a 30 year fix. This guy must be talking about a 15. And so a salesman is going to quickly, you know, try to make a sale because this is, this is as salesman, this is what we see leads for. When we hear lead, we're like, okay, I got to sell it. <laughs> right, we don't look as, at lead at, at a lead as what it is, and that's basically a, a name, a phone number, and some information to somebody who wants some information that I have. And when we hold that information that they want to a higher level or higher degree, we give value to that information. It becomes it becomes something that creates urgency. It becomes something that that makes them anticipate anticipating the second call, the pitch call. But when it comes first from a prospecting point of view, our goal is to primarily find out what the, what the problem is, what the pain is. And what I found is that by asking them what their goal is, we're giving them control of the conversation. Of course, everyone's going to say, I want a lower rate and lower payment. But what happens is when as a salesman or even as a human, when you hear that request, naturally you just want to answer it, right? Because this is something that we do. We serve. So we serve answers. Well, I want you to look at your origination in a completely different light. I want you to see it as just a contact, but more importantly, I want you to, to create a mindset in a way where when you engage with that person, you're, you're primarily looking to help that person, right? And so it's really the difference between, you know, imagine if your mom or your dad or your auntie or your family member uh, referred to you their best friend or maybe even if if you're doing you know business with your family you might be doing a loan for your mom there's a specific tone that you would talk 
to a, a friend or a friend of a friend or a friend of a family member, there's a, there's a specific approach, a tonality that you'll use. You'll sound like a consultant is really what works. But when, when, when we realize how we change, we change very similar to like if you're going into a job interview, right? Like you, when you go into a job interview and you go into that interview room, you, you sit up straight, right? Like, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, and, and there's that tonality that changes your dynamics. It changes your demeanor. And this is really the, the, the real purpose as to why we're actually pushing prospects away. And so this, this script is going to share with you how to take control of the conversation, but it's going to give you the words that, that really melt the objection and the comments and the reviews and the testimonials thus far, not just the testimonials, you know, if you scroll down to the bottom of this page, I'm talking about the testimonials from people in my own, in my own place of employment, people all throughout the country saying that this script has just made it so much easier, so much smoother. And I'm going to release that updated copy to you at the end of this webinar. But I want, I want to bring up something to you that I believe is something that we as mortgage bankers, we use every single day. And ultimately it's something that we can ultimately use for our advantage. But right now, what we're doing is we're just giving it away for free. We're just giving it away kind of just like nonchalantly. And it's okay if you are, because if you're giving this information away, it's just something that you do, right? It's just, this is what we believe is traditional. And what I'm gonna teach you in this webinar is how to be resourceful, how to utilize tools and give value to tools that we use every day and create inside information. Because inside information creates curiosity, it creates suspense, right? It creates mystery. And if you wanna know how to track somebody, you create mystery, you create curiosity. It's like that, it's like a movie trailer, you know? And, and you ever see a good movie trailer? You're like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta see what happens, you know? And that's kind of the feeling that you need to leave your prospect from the first initial conversation. In this webinar, I'm gonna reference initial conversation and then sales pitch, because these should be two different calls. And so some of you probably on here like, but Daniel, man, I'm a one call closer. <laughs> and if you are, man, I salute you. But at the end of the day, if you wanna increase your closing ratio, if you wanna increase the power of your message, you, I, I, I strongly recommend or at least urge you to consider doing a two call pitch. If you wanna utilize the tools that you learn here on the webinar to its absolute maximum level, then you're, you're, you, it's a process, you know, it's a system, it's a formula that you have to practice. And so besides inbounds, I want to share with you a tool that we use every single day that can ultimately become our bridge to an outbound call. And before I go over this right now, I just wanna clarify, outbound call is, is it could be a follow-up call. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be a quote unquote cold call. You know, you're not necessarily dialing to ask for business. However, I do hear agents all the time and you might even agree with me that you hear people in your circle, this is how their outbound calls. If, number one, if you make outbound calls, I salute you. You know, you're, you're, already, you're already a level ahead of all your competitors because all of our competitors, they just simply don't make outbound calls. And the reason why is because outbound calls is associated with, with objections. It's associated with resistance. And our mindset plays a huge role with regards to how we hunt or how we originate, meaning we can go into an outbound call worried that they're not gonna like the rate, worried that they're gonna give us an objection. But when we switch our view and we look at it as, hey, I'm going to give you some information. Hey, I have some information that can genuinely help you. Whether you use it or not, at least you have the information. It's a different sound, right? And so this tool that we use commonly that we may be sleeping on is the property profile. Your, your company may have in its CRM a, a, a special uh, property profile report. And this is something that you should always have up in front of you whenever you're speaking to a prospect because it gives you, you know, their, the last time they refinanced, what kind of loan they had, how long they've owned the property, what the comps are. And sometimes we, you know, we, have, we don't give that information the value that, that it deserves. And so for example, my company, we have an RCM this button, it's called the profile report. And when the profile report goes out, it's basically data that's extracted from Title Pro, Title Pro and also Zillow. And you know, if you ever look at those comparable sales, 
there are reports on like the school system, the school rating, um, you know, of course the recent sales and this becomes information. So from homeowner to homeowner, any of you guys who are homeowners, you know, when you, in your neighborhood, when you see the house sell, what's the first question you ask? Like, man, I wonder how much it's sold for, right? Or when, when, when you move to an area and you have family and you have kids, you're worried about the school district. I moved to my zip code because of the school district. I moved, I live where I live because of the school district. Does that make sense? Because I have kids here. And when we realize that this information is more valuable than, hey, what's your lowest rate? What's your lender credit? It's actually, it's actually attracting them for the true reasons as to why they need to talk to you. And it's because you have information that, that creates value. And so let me give you an example. So the property profile report is very, very simple to, to pull up, for, at least for us, right? But how does our consumer pull it up? They go through Zillow or they go online and you know, there's just a plethora of, of, of information. Well, with a property profile report, we can treat it as a complimentary report or a complimentary notice. And this becomes our bridge to, to allow us to quickly assess anyone and everyone within our own internal database. And so your company, the place where you, where, where you originate loans from, has some sort of database. It has some sort of database of past clients that never, that never locked or never you know, actually went through but was disclosed on. Your company has a database of probably past funded files and there's, there's just so, such a mass amount of information. And where we have to really accept or what we have to realize is that when we, when we look at this opportunity as a way to generate business in a bucket, a bucket meaning that it's an area where a lot of our competitors simply are not. They're not outbounding, right? They have their CSRs outbounding. And, and a customer service representative, God bless them, but at the end of the day, they're not like us, right? They don't know the, the language, but more importantly, once that customer service representative hears just a, a slight interest there, let me get a loan officer on the phone with you. And so this is why when the prospect gets transferred to you, they're on defense, right? They're like, whoa, whoa, wait, I don't wanna to speak to a loan officer, <laughs> right? And then they get connected to you, and if they didn't hang up, you say hello, and immediately you're, you're in resistance. And, and so then we, we so associate that resistance with outbound. Like, oh man, this is an outbound call. This is gonna be a grind. When in all reality, you could turn that into your favor. So for example, if I were connected with someone from a customer service representative, this customer service representative was hungry. They wanted to send me anyone and everyone, right? Because he's trying to get his numbers up. I'm okay with that. I'm empathetic with that because I appreciate them just giving me contacts, them just giving me an, some, a, a connection. And so if I was connected, let's say Mr. Patel, right? Mr. Patel just wants the lowest, absolute lowest rate. Just want no fees, right? Mr. Patel probably hasn't even kept up with the market and still thinks 1.99 is still available on 10 year fix or 2.5, no closer. And, and let's say I was connected to him and, you know, and, and Mr. Patel was like, hey, you know what, Daniel, before I go any further, I don't wanna talk to you. Can you help me or not? Number one is that would only happen if I allowed that to happen. Right. And so sometimes we unknowingly allow that to happen and we give them the driver's seat and we try to guide them when we're actually following them because they're the one who set the tone and the direction of the conversation. And so instead of putting resistance in play immediately, what I'll do is say, hey, Mr. Patel, thanks for holding. The reason why he's transferring you over to me or she's transferring you over to me is because I'm authorized to release this information. As a matter of fact, it's actually on its way. It's gonna to go to your Gmail account. Whether you choose to use the information or not, we're keeping you informed as a courtesy because we do a large amount of volume within your area and our information is accurate as of within the last seven to 14 days. And so now you create exclusivity, but you bring up information that really in essence is our property profile report, right? But we, we see it as a common tool. We see it as kind of like a calculator, like, man, I'm sure these people got a calculator. But these people don't have pro property profile reports. They don't have information sometimes on their school. They don't have information sometimes on the sale or how the tax reform, the 2018 tax reform uh, affects them, right? So, but if we mention this and say, hey, you know, with that new tax reform bill that was rolled out, there's some information that I think that you should know and this complimentary report shows you how to protect yourself from those changes. And so it's on its way. I'm gonna go and send that over to your Gmail account right now. Again, whether you use it or not is up to you. 
hey, while I got you on the phone, Mr. Patel, I can make sure it's worth your time. As a matter of fact, I can actually design it in a way where it's applicable to you. I see Mr. Patel, the last time you refinanced was 2015. The balance was about 300,000. Let me update it for you real quick. What's the balance today? Mr. Patel says, uh, I don't know, three, 300, right? Um, and, and from there say, okay, got it. So I'm gonna go and plug that information out to you. It's on its way. You know what, is there any other outside debt like home equity lines of credit or credit card debt? And the, the, if Mr. Patel would say, well, why does that matter? Well, it matters because again, the tax reform bill, um, it shows you all options, right? So if you have a home equity line of credit, there are changes with that that'll show you how to, how to combine that with your first. So it's really neat, I'll show you. Is there an equity line of credit? No. Okay, is there any revolving debt? Uh, yeah, I owe about maybe twenty to thirty thousand dollars in credit card debt. Got it. How much do you pay total? Just just rough estimates, fine. How much are you paying on that debt? And then you might learn that he pays, let's say, five hundred dollars, and say, okay, Mr. Patel, I'm gonna go ahead and send that out to you. It's on its way. Of that of that five hundred dollars that you send to those credit cards, though, is that the minimum or is that the above and beyond? And depending on the answer, you're gonna be able to steer in one or two different ways, right? And so Mr. Patel says, oh, you know what? That's just the minimum payments, got it. Okay, so in terms of the revolving debt, do you, you know, how much do you know about, about the, the max limit? Like, do you know if these are above 30% of its max limit? The reason why is because if, if it's damaged your FICO score, then I can send you a completely applicable report for you. So it's actually worth your time. It's gonna be applicable to you. It's gonna save you a bunch of time. And this ultimately just extracts more information to give you more leverage, right? And so if we find out, yeah, every credit card is over 30%, I got it. What I've learned, Mr. Patel, is that actually credit bureaus view that as a max out credit report. So it's probably weighed on your credit. And so what I want to do is I want to show you some, I have an idea, but let me confirm first and then go into the application. You see, if Mr. Patel gave me resistance again and said, you know what, Dan, I just need to know if you, beat, if you can beat this rate. Absolutely, I'm gonna show you that I can. I'm gonna show you that I can create savings. And whether he wanted a 2.5 or 3.5, I can show him how to get that, whether it's discount points, whether it's 10 years. So I'm not lying to Mr. Patel. But what I'm trying to do is find out why Mr. Patel wants that lower rate. And I already found out that he wants that lower rate because he needs an answer to that $500 credit card bill, right? Or he wants to get himself out of credit card debt. And so now the focus isn't necessarily on rate, but now I know and I'm empathetic enough to know that the consumer world is not like us. They don't have an NMLS license. They don't speak our language every day. And so Mr. Patel just knows that if I lower my rate, then I can create savings and I need that savings to pay off my credit card debt. And so we need to position ourselves as a consultant and extract as much leverage as we can because what sells today is emotion. And when we find out what their emotional tie is to the result that your product or your service gives, we can, we can present it in a way where the focus is taken, away, taken off of interest rates and fees. This works. There's a formula of how to properly orchestrate your conversation so that they don't only just give you the social, they don't only just give you, you know, the time for the second pitch, but they give you urgency. They give you their docs in a timely manner. They give you their stiffs, they give you their compliance, and you set them up in a way where you hand the baton off to your operations and you can go hunt again. You see, what eats up most of our time is because the formula or the sequence of our delivery is actually creating resistance. It's leaving our prospects sounding like this. Well, let me go and talk to my spouse a little bit more or let me go ahead and run this by my spouse, or let me go and think about it, or let me go ahead and compare. And so when we get to that point where we pitch and we hear that, we hear that response, we don't realize that it took us about an hour just to get there. Not only that, but if we don't follow the right formula in delivery, this person is not giving me their loyalty. That's why they wanna go compare. And so really it just means that we miss something. And typically, it's just because of the way we delivered the message. It's the, it's the order that we delivered the message. So I hope that helps you guys um, because this is something that's massively huge in our favor because it, what other way could you approach a stranger through a cold call and say, um, you know, because the traditional way is like, hey, my name is Daniel. I'm just checking to see if you're in the market to refinance or you're in the market to do cash out. And ultimately what I'm doing is I'm pushing them away because, you know, media, right, their neighbors th themselves are saying, oh, the market's up, you know, not a good time to refinance. 
don't pull cash out of your home. And so I'm actually taking a risk by doing that, but more importantly, I'm also assuring the likelihood of them saying no, because I'm offering. And so when you're a salesman, you offer, right? You ask. When, when, when you're a consultant, you drive, you suggest, you, you provide, right? Like, and that's why the tonality of a consultant will work is because you're saying it's already on its way. So in my example with Mr. Patel, you'll notice that I'm always teetering off. Yeah, it's actually on its way. I'm going to send it to your Gmail account. You got to check it out. Super neat. By saying that I'm, I'm, I'm giving Mr. Patel the, the illusion or, you know, the, the, the idea that it's on its way, right? And so it's already handled, it's coming. Might as well have it uh, personalized to you because it's not asking them if I can help them. I'm actually telling them and it's on its way. And so there's, it's really powerful and I'll, I'll cover more about that thesis inside the script that I released to you at the end of this webinar. And so, you know, the transition, right? Because marketing is, is how I, I attract them to do the rest of the conversation. But when we hop into the 1003 and we do that full application, that is actual selling. That's when the sale happens. And we don't know this because sometimes we'll think that the sale happens on the close. It happens on the pitch. When in all reality, the sale happened on the first conversation because the sale was the information that you extracted in that first conversation. But more importantly, the sale actually happened before the second call was even set up. So, so for, you know, for example, when I, when I find out the main purpose of someone wanting a low rate and payment and I decide to hop into the 1003, I don't do a 1003 in its order. The 1003 sounds like a conversation. So in other words, I'm not necessarily asking him, okay, what's the name of your employer, their address, what's your title, you know, you know in the order that, that I see on the 1003 or your LOS system. But if you learn how to make that 1003 into a conversation in a way where you, you ask the questions in an order that enables you to save time, but also enables you to extract the right information that you need to create the urgency and create the suspense and curiosity for them to be tied to that second pitch. Get it? So when it comes to like realtors and purchases, and I, and I definitely want to put a few minutes, and I know I'm running a little bit longer on this. So, you know, I hope you guys are enjoying the content. If you guys are, please leave a comment in the chat box. Let me know that you're getting some value because whether you're seasoned or whether you're new to this game, I believe that you know, you're, you're either going to say, ah, yeah, right? Or you're going to say, aha. <laughs> and, and I believe one of those, one of those two reactions is going to happen. And I believe that, you know, when, when, when you, when you realize that there's a, there's a, just a completely different way to do something that you've been doing all this time and you may have been doing it the long way or the hard way. Right. And then you realize like, oh man, that's it. Has that ever happened to you? <laughs> like, oh man, I could have been doing it this entire time that way and saved me a bunch of time, saved me a bunch of money, avoided a bunch of sleepless nights. And so that's what I hope to leave you with in this webinar is information that's going to position you properly. And so I'll quickly go over like purchases and realtors, you know, um, Right now, I think that, that the common issue with, with, uh, with originating purchase loans, right, more purchase loans, is that the loan officer has this conception that they need to schmooze a realtor, like they, I need to go buy you coffee, or I need to go buy your broker office treats, or I need to go buy you, you know, dinner at Mastro's. There's, there's this conception where we offer the realtors to, you know, damn near pay their bills, right? Like, like that's the way we believe we actually generate business. But I want to share with you a way where you can actually attract realtors to you. So if you're thinking right now, like, man, how do I pick up my purchase business? How you pick up your purchase business is that you put yourself in front of or you attract realtors, right? And I think that's why a lot of mortgage bankers right now are knocking on doors of broker shops. They're hopping in on, on a market, I'm sorry, uh, open houses and they're selling, they're trying to sell the realtor like, hey, we're the number one company and hey, we have fast turn times and hey, we help you market you, you, you know, we, we, we put your name out there and we co-brand you and, and we believe because everyone else around us is doing it, we believe that that's the way to do it. When in reality, what I found is just like a prospect, you need to sell your realtor with the result, not the vehicle, right? You need to sell them the destination, not, not the transportation, not the vehicle and how to get there. So, so what, we, what we should consider is if you're dabbling in purchase right now, I would only imagine that you have access to PALS, 
right? POWs are pre-approval letters. So you're, you're doing the first initial conversation to get this person pre-approved. Well, after you get them pre-approved, typically at that point, they may not necessarily have a, a realtor. But now that you have a pre-approved loan file, you now have a connection to enable you to network with a realtor. And so this pre-approved letter becomes more powerful than saying, hey, let me, let's go grab coffee. I want to tell you how awesome I am. Because that realtor, much like prospects, they hear the same sound. And, and any human, whether realtor or prospects or even us, when we hear certain things, when we hear certain sounds, <coughs> when we hear certain tonalities, we put ourselves on guard, right? Um, it, it's very similar to you walking in a regular retail store and you hear that one representative, hi, can I help you? You know, immediately we react, no, I'm okay. Or if you go to someone's house and they ask you, hey, can I get you something to drink? You know, sometimes we don't, we just naturally say, no, I'm okay, I'm fine. Even though we really do need help or even though we're really parched. So I want you to think about that because a lot of times when we approach, whether it's a consumer or a realtor, we're sounding like everyone else. And so if you want to get their attention in this noisy world of advertisements, pitches and marketing and alerts and text messages and DMs, you have to sound different. And so a strategy where let's say, cause I'm, I'm multiple license, I have multiple licenses, right? Like my team, like we have, my agents have, 10 plus licenses. So, I mean, we're phone assassins. We're just on the phone all day. We're doing businesses. We're doing business all throughout the country. And even if I had a pal where it was like in Florida or in Texas or in Arizona, it, I will see the pal as not just a, a person who's, you know, working with a realtor or a person who wants to buy a house, but I'm looking at that as my bridge to gain access to a realtor. And so if I had a pal, then I could very well do research within the area that they plan to shop in, find the realtor who's heavily embedded in the community on social media or who has somewhat of a presence and let them know that I have a qualified, a qualified buyer. More importantly, I'm going to let them know that I come across qualified buyers all the time and if I can send them more. Because what happens is when you create that approach, it's not easy to turn it down. Who, what realtor do you know who works on full commission would say no to commission? So each one of them are going to say yes, right? But this also creates a pocket, depending if you're an outside loan agent or you're an internal agent, it creates a pocket to either get more business in return, meaning let's say if you're an internal loan agent, you know, you'll get business in return because you'll, you'll get, you'll get refinances. You know, these outside loan agents sometimes can't compete with internal loan agents uh, or call center agents because of pricing. Or if you're an outside loan agent and you can't compete with pricing either, at least it enables you to network with that individual. And so if that realtor knew that you come across a lot of pre-approval uh, buyers or pre-approved buyers who are pretty much good as a buyer with cash in hand, you then position yourself with more authority, right? More importantly, you have reason to network with that realtor. And so if I, if I ask that realtor who I just, you know, now I'm enticing them with a pre-approved letter, not free coffee, not free bagels. I'm telling them and say, Hey, you know what? I got more uh, pre-approved buyers within your area, probably outside the scope. Do you know a realtor within this County that I can forward uh, a pre-approved letter to? And when they, when they mention someone, you know, because that realtor was at already at, at a higher level or already doing it and in the motion, these realtors, they all know each other, just like mortgage bankers. Like we all know each other, right? Some way, shape or form. And you're just trying to create a brand within that network and deliver, right? Like you got to deliver at the end of the day, that's your first impression. And so if you do it right, you build your book of business for repeat business. And so I think that that that's important to consider because purchase business is is a uh, it's a big part of our pipeline now, you know, and, and for a lot of us people, you know, like me, I w I'm all about refinances because that's our norm. You know, this is just something that we do. But until we adapt and learn the science or the dynamics of originating purchase loans, we're actually going to actually starve ourselves. So, you know, going on to the next thing, um, with regards to like, uh, like selling, you know, going through that 1003, I want to bring up a few things that will really help you. You know, the, the, the way you actually build excitement, the way you ask questions, right. From like the difference of, of, uh, you know, saying, 
Um, how much in credit card debt do you have? How much do you send? Rough estimate. Got it. Is that the minimum or above due? Those are very powerful funnel questions that give you the absolute most leverage and then builds more excitement for what solution you have in mind, right? But the key thing is though, is that we don't just jump into the sale where I hear it too many times where someone might say, oh yeah, I owe 30 grand in debt. The mortgage banker would say, oh, well, I can help you pay off that debt right away, right? Without, without building it up. And as I mentioned, there is a system, there's a formula, there's, a, there's timing and positioning that you have to consider before you release that type of information or you're just gonna, you know, you're just gonna, you may very well position yourself to push them away. So other things that, that are, are key questions are, uh, are net, is, is something that I like to call net net income. And, and it sounds cool because it's not typical, right? It's not, it's not, it's something again of value. And so you build value on it and say, Hey, you know what? Um, I'm going to go and add this to your file real quick. We have what's called a net net income. What that means, Mr. Patel is of your net income. We'll use April, for example, how much of your net income earned in April is going in with you into May. And so ultimately what that does is it creates a funnel question to find out what their budget is because it's kind of awkward, right? To say, Hey, how much money you got in the bank? It's kind of awkward to say, Hey, how much money do you have left at the end of the month? Or how much, you know, how much money, um, uh, are you, are you, are you in a deficit or are you in a surplus? Sometimes those questions are very awkward to ask. And so what I found is that you create a funnel question that leads to that question. And so when I created like this net net term, I say, Hey, you know what? We have this thing, what's called net net. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put that in your file and I'm going to go and prepare it and send it out to you. So this net net income basically is how much of your net income follows you into the next month. And ultimately what they'll say more than likely is a couple hundred bucks or a thousand dollars, or even sometimes a couple thousand dollars. And what they, what, what they don't realize though, is that that, extra $500 or $1,000 they don't really have because it goes towards other things like dining out. It goes towards clothes, hobbies, kids, daycare, things that we don't see on the credit report. And these are things that we need to be coherent about, right? Because, uh, you know, if anyone has kids on here, we understand the cost of daycare. If anyone has kids in here, we understand the cost of private school or private tuition or school tuition. And sometimes that's not on our clients, um, uh, credit report, right? Um, and sometimes even when we ask, like if they're dependents and we know that they got two or three kids and we see in our, you know, we see in front of us on the 1003 that both of them are working. Sometimes it takes us just taking a step back and realize, well, who's watching these kids, right? There's other costs that are associated. And again, if we understand that the purpose of them wanting that 1.25 30 year fixed rate is because they believe that's the only way that they can create savings then all our goal is, is to find out, well, what are you going to do with the savings? Right? And so even if, if Mr. Patel said, oh, I got a thousand dollars extra per month and it goes, you know, that's my surplus, right? I say, got it. Great. That's awesome. That's actually more than most that I, that I speak to. So I salute you for that of that thousand dollars that you have left. How much of that do you actually put in checking and savings that you don't need to touch? That is how you get to the question of how much you have in checking and savings. Because if there are certain questions where I ask at a time that's not correct or in a way that just seems intrusive, I'm putting them at guard. And so if I ask like, you know, just standard, like how much do you have in assets, checking savings? Well, immediately I can position myself where that prospect is going to say, what the hell does that matter? What? I'm, I'm not applying for anything right now. Now I'm pushing them away. Does that make sense? Where if you create a funnel question where it just leads to that important question, it's more powerful. But more importantly, you're creating bond in a different way. And a lot of the times when it comes to the pitch call, they forgot they even told you that information. They forgot that they told you that they're at a, a $200 deficit. They forgot that they told you that their credit cards are maxed out. They forgot that they told you that, you know, their wife handles the bills, right? And so these are certain things that we need to, to pay mind to and keep note for when we go into the second call. But you also want to make sure that it, that the transition to your close is appropriate. It's appropriate for, you know, both prospects because, you know, if you're currently getting stopped right now uh, by the objection, like, you know, when you go in for the pitch, you ask for the sale and you're currently getting stopped right now by the objection of, oh, I need to think about this or let me go ahead and run this by my wife. It's because we sometimes miss the signs that there is a decision influencer. And we can pick up these signs by listening to the words that our prospects say, such as, I think we pay this much, right? So if you're asking about credit card payment, I think we pay 
right? That's an immediate sign that number one, he doesn't handle the bills or she doesn't handle the pills. And number two, that there's another person involved where it takes about 45 minutes of good work, right? Just to get up to a pitch. And, and sometimes we unknowingly position ourselves to be declined because we didn't take the time or were empathetic enough to say, hey, there's a decision influencer and I need to make sure that that person is there because if I just pitch Mr. Patel, I'm relying on Mr. Patel to sell Mrs. Patel. But if I ensure that Mrs. Patel was there at the pitch call, I'm actually selling Mrs. Patel based on information I learned from Mr. Patel to ensure that even if they said, let me talk about it, that I got Mrs. Patel as my biggest cheerleader. She's the one saying, man, I like him. <laughs> Everything this guy was saying was just, Woo, let's do business with him because I'm speaking their language. I'm, I'm basically doing the difference of, hey, Mr. Patel, Mrs. Patel, thanks for joining me. I got a couple options for you. Grab a pen and paper, right? The, the, Mr. and Mrs. Patel are not properly framed. They're not in the right mindset. So we, we unknowingly go through this route because it's traditional, it's norm, right? It's, it's just, it's like going into Starbucks. And if you guys ever go into Starbucks and you see that long line of people, like they're like it sometimes it's out the door, right? Like, why are you standing in line? Like they got an application. Like you could order it on your way to Starbucks, and by the time you get to Starbucks, you just get your drink. <laughs> but you just right? So people will stay in line because it's just the norm. They don't know any better. And sometimes we can do the same type of thing when we pitch a call. We believe that that's the right way. We believe that the right way to close somebody is saying, hey. Uh, Mr. Patel, I got those options for you. If you can grab a pen and paper, I'm going to go ahead and go over those options with you. And sometimes we don't realize that we're letting them know that it's an option. They don't need to choose it because it's an option. More importantly, we, we're letting them know that now is a decision, right? Time to make a decision. And what I have found in understanding and, and studying human psychology is that a decision is one of the hardest things to ask a person to do because there are so many consequences, people don't like making decisions. There are so many consequences and, 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 and you know, investment that goes into making a decision. No one wants to make a mistake. No one wants to look dumb. And so when we ask, when we position them where they believe they are in a pitch, it's no longer a collaboration. It's no longer consulting them. I'm now tap dancing and hoping they like the way I tap dance. When in reality, the, the proper way to do it is to, is to reframe their mindset, rehash all of the information you extracted in the first call. Because now that Mrs. Patel was there and you made sure that she was there, you're actually speaking their language, meaning you're saying words and numbers and, and things that they talk about when they're alone, when they talk about when they're paying the bills. When they talk about their future plans, when they talk about their family savings, they're, they're, you're announcing it out loud. And something very powerful happens when words you hear are words you relate to and, and it impacts you, right? Like, oh man, that's, how'd you know that? <laughs> that's bond. Bond is not, hey, you know, I got, I got kids too. My kids play soccer, your kids play soccer. And, and, but that's the traditional norm, right? We as salesmen are trained to tap dance and build rapport and ask about kids. And I think that's, that's just the wrong way to do it nowadays. You know, it's evolved. It's, it's, we're just in a different climate. And so the tools that you learn here with regards to this webinar workshop are, are going to be very impactful. So the closing tips, um, you know, again, you want to, you want to make your sales pitch sound like a, a, uh, like it's a confirmation. It's not a pitch. And so, for example, when you, when you build up to your pitch call, if you're, if you're currently saying, hey, I'm going to have some options in a couple hours, are you ready? You're going about it the wrong way. Where if you instead transition and set up your pitch call like this and say, hey, you know what? I got a couple ideas. Let me get my bless. Let me get blessing from my manager first before I, I even go over it because I don't want to waste your time. And if he says and if he approves, I'm going to go ahead and release that to you because it will help you, you know, eliminate the credit card debt. It will help you do this. It will help you do that. But but before I go over those details, let me make sure it's OK with him first before I send it out. You know, I'm, I'm going to hear from him at about five or six o'clock tonight. And I, I set the time. I don't ask them if they're gonna be available in an hour because I don't know if they're gonna still be at work, if they're gonna be rushed on a, on a lunch meeting. But more importantly, if the other decision influencer, Mr. or Mrs. Patel is not ready at that time, I'm not gonna release the information at that time. Get it? And so 
when you when you set up the appointment, it has to be in a way where where all they believe is it's just going to confirm. It's just a confirmation. And so when you reconnect with them, and now you you properly position yourself to ensure that Mrs. Patel is present, or you can conference call her in. And sometimes I will say five o'clock because I know that they're in route home, and I and I did the homework and I found out that that's a forty five minute commute home, and I found out that Mrs. Patel is a homemaker. Then I can catch him. Un, you know his full attention almost pretty much in commute home on a conference call with Mrs. Patel. Now it's like I got both of them at the table, right? Um, so get creative. That's going to be based on you, but but think about it. When they when they believe that the second call is just confirmation that the manager approved it, it has a different weight to it than hey, I'm going to have a couple options for you. You know, um, we'll we'll cover that in an hour. And when you open up your conversation, like hey, I got those options. Grab a pen and paper. You're actually putting them on defense. So really realize that. And there's just so much information. Um, you know, I know it's it's hitting on five minutes, and it's taking a little longer than expected. Uh, you know, I have so much information here with regards to closing, and transitioning, and mindset. But I'll leave you with the most important note. Number one is that when when you you know when you when you really think about your grind and when you think about your system and you think about your goal setting because every every single month we may have this uh this way of setting our goals to be based on our manager or maybe our vp right and so sometimes we can be setting our goals based on someone else when in all reality we need to be able to learn how to set our own goals so i want you to really think about you know what your deeper reasons of why is because that is what keeps you with a strong mindset your why could be different. My why is my family, my security, my being able to provide. I will do anything and everything I can for my family. That's, that's word, you know, and if you understand what that means, then that could be your why. But you may not have a family. You may not have kids. And so your why is just to get that new whip or that new car, right, or that new house or whatever. And, and so some, there's something there. And in order to achieve it, we need to make a certain amount of income. And so I'm going to share with you before I end this webinar of how to really control your income. So everything has a system. You know, if you look at any large company, they really get it down to the numbers. And so there's this thing called KPI. It's an abbreviation. It stands for key performance indicators. Your manager will know what your KPI is. Your KPIs are basically, you know, how, of how many leads you talk to turn into an application or credit pool of how many credit pools you talk to turn into a lock, of how many locks you do turn into an elevation or submission, of how many submissions you turn in turn into a funding. And so these are milestones. These are different conversion ratios that you need to understand. Because if your goal was to, and I'm gonna use a random number, let's say make $10,000 per month, well, you need to know the path to make the $10,000 per month. So whether you get tier bonuses or whether you get a flat rip per file, you have to understand number one is how much do I make on average with one extra loan, right? Or one loan. That could be as small as 100 bucks, 300 bucks, 500 bucks. Everything is different. But let's say in order to hit $10,000, you need to do a high number of applications because you understand your KPIs, right? So if your goal was to do $10,000 in that month and in order to do 10,000, you needed to fund 10 units. Well, now you need to break it down into a per day uh, goal. Because what happens is when, when most of us, and you know, let me know if you relate to this, when most of us go into a month, we go into a month, of course, confident, right? Like, yeah, I'm gonna do 15, I'm gonna do 20. And what happens is as that very first week, unknowingly, we believe we have a lot of time. That's where our big mistake happens. We believe we have more time. And so we're not as hungry or, or as motivated to hit our 15 or 20 in the first week or even sometimes two weeks. But when we become motivated to hit it and we start putting in the action is a little bit closer towards month end. You ever get that? Like you're not even halfway to your goal and you're like, oh man, I really got to pick it up. Well, that becomes weight. That becomes weight that, bring, that follows you into the month. More importantly, the last week of the month, you need to position yourself to be fully open for your closing loans. You need to be available, right? You need to be, you need to be the one that makes sure the notary contacts your prospect, your prospect contacts the, you, know, you and everyone is, is kosher. And so I believe that, that 
we have to have to have to understand what our own ratios are because if you're having a problem with getting credit pulls to locks it's probably because you're delivering it wrong the information or the formula you're using to deliver it wrong deliver the information is just not capturing their attention however if you're having a problem from lead intake to credit pools then again it's probably your script it's it's how you're opening the conversation but also if you're if you're if you're locked to elevation or submission is low then it means you're not setting up the right expectation so this allows you to zero in but more importantly when you find out what your kpis are and you find out how much money you need to make that month you need to break it down on a daily basis and so my personal experience is that i created what's called a dub system a dub means two so double right i'm gonna i'm gonna double my points because everyone goes in just looking for a sale i'm going in looking for plural <laughs> i want two three or four and, and you have to create that system because that system, it, when you reset it every day, you're not carrying in the weight with you from the day before. You're not carrying in the weight worried about the future because you're just building that day. You're building the future, get it? So when you're busy building a future, you're not, you're not busy worried about it. Make sense? More importantly, you're not looking at a big number, like 15, oh man, I need to hit 15 every single day, right? Because once it gets to the 15th of the month, then that number starts changing. All right, well, I guess I'll do 10. But if you do it every single day and say, hey, I need my two points every single day, then that should generate the sales that you want. And so you really gotta think about it, like how, how much do you make per loan, right? So of the information you learned here in this webinar, there's, there's enough information to ensure that you're going to pick up a couple extra units just for the time that you spent here. And so I appreciate you guys spending, you know, these, uh, this early hour in your morning. Uh, fortunately, we have the entire day ahead of us. So I want you to be enlightened, you know, and, and I definitely want your feedback. So if you guys ever have any questions, my email is daniel at salesremaster.com. If you guys can uh, do, do me a favor, hit refresh and then hit play on, on the video screen again because I, I'm releasing now the script to you. So again, refresh your browser and then hit play on the, uh, on the video box so that when you reload your screen, you're going to have access to the script. More importantly, I'm gonna give you access to, if you scroll down, I'm gonna give you access to a few other things. Access to my course at a promotional discount. A lot of the information, if you believe that it's strong, if you believe that I know what I'm talking about, well, imagine what I put inside these courses. And these courses are actually gonna go up in price come, mo come Monday, or I'm sorry, Tuesday, at uh, the beginning of May. And here's an opportunity where you can gain coaching and mentoring from someone who speaks your language, someone who is in the trenches with you. Again, having a mentor is powerful, but having a mentor that is a practitioner, like they're currently doing what you do um, and they're winning at it, <laughs> right, is, is more powerful than just having an influencer online. And so, you know, if you, if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, what, where it used to be the testimonials, now you're gonna see the three things that I wanna, I wanna help give you. Um, on the far right is my gift to you, which is the new Sales Remastered script. And so if you click on the picture, it actually brings it up. You can download it and save it for later. I wouldn't print it out though, because there's a lot of ink. <laughs> so consider that, but at least you have it available and you can maybe save it uh, to a favorite on your favorites bar. But more importantly, we got uh, a promo discount on the formula. So everything that I covered with you from alpha to omega, um, mindset, system creation, um, you know, the chase, which is basically originating loans, like how to properly market, what to say, how to get past roadblocks, what to say if this objection happens here, and what to say if this objection happens here. All of that is within the formula. And it, again, if you think about it, not too many courses actually pay for itself and then some, right? Not too many, not too many courses out there can, can it, where you can get that immediately gives you results. Not only that, but if that course gave you one extra sale per month, it paid for itself and then some because that course shows you how to design your own system. That course shows you how to repeatedly hit the tiers, the top tiers, and how to properly work towards that direction so that you're not wasting time. That's all within the formula. Now, there is a smaller condensed version of the formula, so, and that's called the close. The close just primarily focuses on how to market, how to cold call, how to inbound, how to, how to network, 
and, and also covers how to transition to the sale, how to frame the sale, how to deliver the sale, how to close the sale. But more importantly, it shows you how to set up the right expectation and how to close hard to close situations. So if you ever got that deal where you're only saving them like 30 bucks and their interest rate's actually going up or you can't pay for the closing costs, it's because of what I had said, the formula, the formula of the way you close. And so the secret formula, the only difference is it has extra modules. So the secret formula has a module on mindset, it has a module on system, system creation, and even has a bonus module that covers things like uh, fast track to sales management, how to build confidence, the most common roadblocks, um, objections and rebuttals, just that in itself will pay for <laughs> favor the course. But that's a bonus and that comes in the secret formula. The close is a more, more uh, condensed course where it's just all about chasing and hunting. That's it. So chase, basically market, originate, and how to close them. Um, if, you're, if you're looking though for like a long-term game, like this is your career, like you love it and you don't see yourself doing anything else outside of this. And I'm talking about this as in sales, communication, not just mortgage banking. Then you're going to want the secret formula. And before the price goes up, I urge you to strongly consider it um, taking control because it's a perfect time, right? The market's changing and, and there's just a lot of things going on that surround us where we really genuinely do need the right coaching, the right mentoring. That's the only way that we're going to be able to sustain the changes that are coming about. And I want to offer that to you for the time that you spent here with me at a, at a promotional discount because the course, you know, is, is going back up to its retail price come, come Tuesday. And so I, I believe that I, I'm very confident that this will not only help you learn how to feed yourself for days to come, but more importantly, it's not, again, some application or some gizmo or technology software that you use to create business. It's the actual fundamental of selling somebody. That's how you create the business, right? Like I can give you all the tools, all the applications, all the softwares, all the websites, you know, and, and that, that you, you, could, you could ever imagine. But at the end of the day, unless you know how to use those tools, unless you really know how to sell that person once you engage with them, those tools really aren't going to serve too much purpose. So I strongly recommend that you do check out those courses and you do give yourself an unfair advantage because when you realize that there's been a shortcut to the same destination, and that shortcut has no red lights, it has no speed bumps, it has less traffic. And you realize that you could have been getting the same result by using this shortcut this entire time, it's gonna be bittersweet. It's gonna be bittersweet because like, damn, how come I was, man, how come I didn't do this before? How come I didn't do this sooner? But at the same time, it's gonna be sweet because now you know the formula, now you know the answer. So I appreciate you guys now that you have access to these links, now that you have access to the promotional discount. Now you can take control of your destiny by putting the right information in front of you. Not the right software, not the right technology, not the right application. It's the right influence. It's the right mentorship. It's the right coaching that's applicable to you today. You know, what sets me apart from everyone else out there who's trying to, to give information that helps is that that information is, is either one, it's given by somebody who's not in your industry or who hasn't been doing what you do, all right, and, or is not giving information that's practical. It's not giving information that's relevant. It's more outdated. It's more aggressive. It's more cheesy. You know, so that's the difference. Whereas now this is fully modernized. It's a adaptable. It's revised. It's remastered. Get it? So learn the new enhanced version to do what you do every day. Imagine removing the roadblocks. Imagine removing the resistance and just repeatedly getting the result you want time and time again. Imagine getting to a point where you could sell two a day. What would that do to your income? right? You have to think about that. And so if you're going to go through this grind, you have two choices. One, you can learn it all on your own. You can try to figure out all on your own. And that's going to take some time. More importantly is it's really going to take a lot of sleepless nights because there's just a lot of trial and error. But if you had a map to get to that destination quicker, less resistance, less fight back, not worried about rate and fees, not worried about, oh, should I compare? 
should I compare Daniel or should I compare him or her? Should I compare them to this company? And you really want to learn how to capture urgency. You really want to learn how to, how to create like the suspense where the prospects are just eager beavers. They're just eager to give you their business. Not only that, but they'll become your, your strongest cheerleader because you learned how to make noise in a different way. You simply learned how to attach your results to the emotions that drive their influence. You see, emotions is the primary base foundation for how decisions are made or why people buy. It's actually based on emotion and then justified through logic, right? And I show you the exact sequence in both the close or the secret formula of how to deliver that sequence, of how to deliver your pitch in a way where that prospect has their eyes glued on you. They're, they only hear you. And in a way where if even if a credit trigger called that prospect back the next day, they're not worried about them. They're worried about you. They want to do business with you. And it's because you attached to them or you bonded with them on a completely different level. And I want you to learn how to do that because that is what you deserve. You were here early morning before everyone else, right? Like a lot of people not even up, a lot of people not even here on this, even though they register. And I want you to know because you took that step, you're already ahead of the game. And you're going to get access to information that no one else has access to. And here's your opportunity. Here's your time. Don't let it pass you by. If you're really about it, if you're really serious about oh, reaching those heights and reaching those levels, you could take the long route or you could take the fast track. Right? And, um, and even though sometimes you got to pay for the fast track, you know, as long as it helps you save time, as long as it pays for itself, and as long as it enables you to take care of you, whether it's you and your family or just you and you, <laughs> um, it, it gives you this sense of freedom. It gives you this sense of confidence and it gives you this sense of control. And I believe you all deserve that for spending some time with me this morning. So I appreciate you guys for the time that you spent to me. Have a great day. And if you haven't followed the channel now, you got to check out at sales remastered, search it on YouTube, search it on Facebook. Um, look at the content, you know, the information you learn today should very well at least illustrate or give you give you an example that I know what I'm talking about. I'm experienced, right? And so not too many influencers out there, not too many mentors or coaches out there. I give information you can't get from your sales manager. For sure, you can't get from your, your corporate trainer. For sure, you probably can't get from your own colleague or your cubicle mate because they're doing the traditional. They're going about it the hard way. And I want to I want to teach you an easier way to do it. I want to teach you a more refined way to do it. And I want to remaster your sales. And I can do that today. Click one of the programs, of course, without signing bias or anything. I, I definitely think the secret formula is going to be really just the grand slam package, not only because of the bonuses, but because of the module that's on mindset and system creation. Um, so even though there's a price difference, at the end of the day, learn the whole thing. If you're gonna do this, do it. You know, so now you have access to it. I appreciate all of you guys. Thank you very much for attending. I will definitely give you guys shout outs later. Um, uh, and I appreciate all the support. I see your DMs. I see you guys tagging me. I see you tagging your friends on the posts that I put. And I appreciate you. There's so much more to come. Um, I'm actually going to be doing a mentoring session where like these live webinars I'll have with you personally talking to you personally, going over your system, going over how you generate your sales, how the, the problems that you get. And I, 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 in this coaching uh, program, I meet with you or not meet with you, virtually meet with you, depending where you're at, for an hour every single week. And I'm going through the challenges that you have. I'm telling you how to get around them, how to position yourself. So that in itself is direct coaching. And that is in the process of being put together. So stay tuned to the channel. But more importantly, get yourself an advantage today so that when you walk into the office on Sunday morning or Monday morning or you know whenever you work next, you're going to be enlightened. You're going to be properly positioned to make sure that you achieve what it is that you set out for. And I believe that's success. Now you have it. I appreciate you guys. Thank you very much for your time. Hope you guys enjoyed this work webinar or this workshop. I hope you, you really picked up some valuable nuggets that you can take away in your days and, and really allevi alleviate a lot of the stress and the frustration that you have every single day in originating sales. Now you have the secret formula. I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much.